Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this video what we're going to do is continue our discussion of Cauchy sequences. Um, we are going to prove uh, that all convergent sequences are Cauchy sequences in any old abstract metric space. So let's say we have our abstract metric space here, which is just a set with a metric defined on it. Okay, and we have a uh, some sequence uh, of uh, elements in this, uh, in this metric space, so let's say x1, x2, x3, etc. And it's converging up on some limit which we've often called L. So let's say that the limit as n approaches infinity of this sequence xn is equal to L. So it's convergent and it is convergent within our uh, metric space L, uh, our metric space x, sorry. Okay, now what we want to show is that this sequence xn is Cauchy basically. So that if it is convergent, it is Cauchy. Okay, and uh, remember uh, the Cauchy criterion says that, uh, so let's just remind ourselves of what the Cauchy criterion says. It says that for all epsilon greater than zero, so this is the um, Cauchy criterion, so I'll just underline Cauchy to remind you that we're saying the Cauchy criterion rather than the convergence criterion. Uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, uh, there should exist uh, a big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that uh, if little n and little m are greater than or equal to big N, it should imply that the distance between x little n and x little m uh, is less than epsilon. So basically, the Cauchy criterion says uh, that uh, if, we, um, if we look at the sequence and we just imagine listing out like this, x1, x2, um, x3, x4, then there should exist some point in the sequence x big N such that if you take any two points beyond x big N, so cut off the tail end of the sequence, pick any two points from this uh, tail end of the sequence, x little n and x little m, pick any two points from this portion of the sequence and take their distance between one another, it should be less than epsilon and you should be able to find a big N uh, big N which works such that this is true uh, for any epsilon. So basically, you give me an epsilon, I should be able to find you a big N uh, such that if you take the tail end of this sequence and take any two points of the tail end of the sequence, uh, the distance between them is going to be less than epsilon. Okay, so that's what we mean by the Cauchy criterion. Okay, so what we want to do is show that if a sequence is convergent, it's going to satisfy this uh, Cauchy criterion. Okay, so uh, the way that we need to do this is say, let epsilon be greater than zero. Now what I need to do is find you an n for this sequence. I need to find you an x big n such that this property is true uh, for that epsilon. Then I will prove in the Cauchy criterion. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is you're going to say, okay, we know that this sequence is convergent. Now what does this sequence being convergent tell us? Uh, the sequence being convergent, so I'll just write this, the sequence um, x little n, uh, being convergent tells us tells us uh, that uh, for all uh, and I'm uh, afraid this is probably going to get a little bit confusing. So I'm going to say that that for all epsilon prime is greater than zero there exists an m prime, we'll say, and the reason I'm putting the primes there is so that we don't confuse it with these epsilons and n's we've used for the Cauchy criterion, uh, m prime, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if, uh, for all, if, uh, if little n is greater than or equal to big N prime, so I should say little n prime is greater than or be equal to big N prime, in fact actually we'll leave it at just little n. If little n is greater than or equal to big N prime, it should imply uh, that um, xn, x little n, should be an element of the ball around the limit L of radius epsilon prime. So that's basically just saying that uh, if it converges to the limit L, then you give me uh, an, an open ball of um, of radius whatever you like, so this is radius epsilon prime, then I should be able to find you a point in the sequence, x big N, such that that point and all points after it in the sequence, so x little n, where little n is greater than or equal to n big N prime, I'm sorry, I apologise, that should be x big N prime, uh, all of these points and are, that point and all of the points afterwards are within that ball. Okay, so, 
uh, this is the way we're going to do it. Let epsilon prime be equal to epsilon over 2. So we're going to use this, this fact here, and we're going to set epsilon prime equal to epsilon over 2, where epsilon is the thing we're using for the Cauchy criteria. So we want to prove that I can find you a big N such that uh, after that point in the sequence, x big N, that any two points of the sequence that you pick, uh, the distance between them is going to be less than epsilon. So I'm saying let epsilon prime equal epsilon over 2. Now what we can say is um, since the sequence converges to a limit uh, limit L, then if I construct a sequence of radius, uh, sorry, if I construct a ball, an open ball of radius epsilon over 2, so if I construct the open ball around L of radius epsilon over 2, there must exist, there must exist an M prime, uh, which uh, d is obviously dependent on your radius, so it will be specific, this M prime will be specific to epsilon over 2, so I might put that epsilon over 2, uh, which is an element of the natural numbers such that uh, if little n is greater than or equal to uh, big M prime, uh, then that will imply that the distance between x little n and L will be less than epsilon over 2. Okay? So that's great, because what that's saying is that there is a point in the sequence big M prime such that all the points are within this ball of radius epsilon over 2. Okay? Now, my claim, claim, is that this is that if we use big N, if we set big N for our Cauchy criterion equal to this M prime, then our Cauchy criterion will be true. I.e., from this point onwards, so this is this point here, let's say this is X big M prime, which is dependent on epsilon over 2. So you go to this point in this sequence, so if I write out the sequence X1, X2, we go along to X big M prime, epsilon over 2, and after that point of the sequence, what we know is that all of these points are within this uh, are within this open ball around L. And my claim is that if we use this big N prime epsilon over 2 as our big N, then basically if you pick any two points out of here, out of this tail end of this sequence, and ask what is their distance, it's going to be less than or equal to epsilon, i.e. this is the tail end of the sequence we can use in the Cauchy criterion for epsilon. Uh, okay, so why is that? So if I pick little xn and little xm, basically, and I want to show that the distance between little xn and little xm is going to be less than epsilon. The reason, intuitively, the reason this is true is because both of these, if I draw this ball again, this is the open ball, and I'm sorry, I've forgotten to do the hash lines. This is the open ball around L of radius epsilon over 2. So this is the open ball around L of radius epsilon over 2. Intuitively, the reason this is going to be less than epsilon is because the diameter of this ball is going to be epsilon. So every single point has to have distance away from each other. If, if you've got two points within this ball, which x little n and x little m have to be, so let's draw that as the x little n, and this is x little m, then these two points have to be within this ball because uh, that's the way we define, that's the way we came up with this ball, that all points of this sequence were going to be within this ball after that, after that uh, big M prime epsilon over 2. Okay, uh, so uh, the distance between them has to be less than epsilon because we can just apply the triangle inequality. This is going to be less than or equal to the distance between xn and uh, the limit L plus the distance between L and xm. So intuitively what I'm doing is doing this triangle here like that. Uh, so um, let me draw this bigger. So we've got this limit L, we've got two points, xn and xm. They are both within this uh, open ball of radius epsilon over 2 around L, which I'll just draw like that. Okay, and we are saying that the distance between the two of them, which is um, this distance here, has to be less than or equal to their distance to the uh, limit, which is at the centre of this ball. So this one here, so that's xm plus uh, L there. Okay, and uh, this side length here is distance between xn and l, and uh, the blue side is this distance between xn and XL, xm. But because xn and x little m are both within this open ball of radius epsilon over 2, these two things, the distance between xn and l, and the distance between uh, l and xm, are both going to be less than epsilon over 2, 
which implies that the sum is less than epsilon, and then by transitivity, it implies that the distance between xn and x, n, x little n is less than epsilon. So the distance between x little n and x little n is less than epsilon. So basically, you pick any two points beyond this point in the sequence, and their distance is going to be within epsilon of one another. So just use that n prime epsilon over 2, which was the big N prime that you found, uh, such that all the terms, uh, that term and all the terms beyond are within this open ball of radius epsilon over 2, um, and use that basically. So what, if you want, uh, the, out the outcome of all of this, the upshot of it all, is that if you want uh, a point in the sequence after which all, if you pick two terms uh, from that tail end of the sequence and ask what is their distance, and you want that to be less than epsilon, and the sequence is convergent, basically just find the point in the sequence after which all of the terms are within the ball of radius epsilon over 2, and basically that will do as your point uh, for the Cauchy criterion, because if you pick any two points uh, in that tail end of the sequence for that m prime, epsilon over 2, uh, they will have a distance away from one another less than epsilon. And that's the reason that all convergent sequences in a metric space are Cauchy sequences. Now, what we'll see in the next video is that the other way round does not necessarily hold. In fact, actually, maybe we could do it in this video. In fact, yes, we'll do it in this video. We'll show that... Um, uh, that uh, all Cauchy sequences aren't necessarily convergent. The reason is that we can take a silly little metric space, basically. We can take uh, a metric space like, um, let's have our metric space as being our set is going to be the set 0 to 1, where you don't include 0. So, um, if we draw the real line here, it's a subset of the real line, but you do not include 0. So here is 0. You don't include it. You go right up to it, include every number bigger than it, but not 0 itself. And then you stop at 1, obviously, but you include 1. Okay, so uh, with the usual Euclidean metric on it, we are talking about, so we can make that into a metric where uh, the distance between two points x and y is just the m absolute value of x minus y. Okay, uh, right, uh, so if you consider the sequence, uh, the sequence x little n uh, as being equal to 1 over n, so this is the sequence... Uh, 1 is the first term, so if you put in x1, uh, that's going to be equal to 1 over 1, which is 1. Then you get a half, which is uh, the x2. Uh, then you get a third, a quarter, etc, 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 etc. Now this is a Cauchy sequence uh, in this metric space. I can find you a point after which all of the terms are uh, arbitrary. Are, are arbitrarily close together. So if you give me an epsilon, I will find you a point in this sequence after which all of the terms are within that epsilon of one another. However, it is not a convergent sequence because it would converge in the real line, it would converge on zero, but zero is not an element of this metric space. So here we have a, converge, a, a Cauchy sequence which is not convergent in our metric space. So the converse does not hold. Uh, it does not hold that all Cauchy sequences are necessarily convergent in an abstract metric space, and here is your counterexample of that.